Uh, and um, then I'm going to, Chris, uh, make you an organizer. Okay. So um, you now uh, can can kind of drive and um, take over. I uh, I will be here for the first sixty minutes of the call. Um, I do, however, have a uh, another meeting um, at eleven that I'll need to leave for. So. Um, yep, Brian is on. Okay, good. I think we can um, get started. So, uh, on the agenda today, um, as we discussed, um, one of the, the key items that I want to get through is to go through uh, and have David uh, will lead us in a review of the white paper. I think that's the most important thing that we can do today. I think there's a couple of items in the action item review that we can uh, briefly cover. Uh, before we dive into that, and then if we, uh, you know, we'll use it at least an hour, and again, we'll see how far we are into it, Dave, and um, <clears throat> if we have to sort of the work group updates, we can get those via email. Um, uh, so, so the first item up is the Hackfest preparation, um, both the, the hackathon, which is the over the weekend of uh, October 1st and 2nd, um, uh, hosted by ABN AMRO, uh, IBM, and the Linux Foundation, and a few others, um, and that registration page is up. And um, Greg, if you wouldn't mind, I don't have the the link there. If you could paste that into the chat, that would be helpful. And then, um, and then the other is for the Hackfest itself. So this is our our face to face on October third and fourth, Monday and Tuesday, following uh, Cybos. Um, there's a registration page up, and please post that link in there as well. I think uh, Tom has sent it a couple of times. And then there's an agenda draft that we can be noodling on over the course of the next few weeks uh, uh, as to what we want to handle in the agenda. Um, any questions on the Hackathon and Hackfest? All right. Um, the next was my action to pull together some thoughts on the Hyperledger release taxonomy, and I haven't done that. Um, uh, so I, I owe that, but I've been focusing on a few other things and traveling. So I'll try and get that done today after the call. Um, and Brian, you joined. Um, so we have the, uh, the wiki and the, the new communication tools uh, that have been out there for uh, to, to allow people an opportunity to poke around and uh, you know get their their thoughts and feedback. So Brian, do you want to first talk about the wiki and plans for migration of the uh, GitHub wiki to the? Um... Sure, sure. This is Brian. Um, I, I'm. I'd love to get other feedback from people on the TFC. I still feel like we are behind on getting. Um, a, a, you know, people to, to look at it. Um, there's still been pretty minimal participation on it, um, and uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly what's best to do now. I mean, uh, you know, this is something that I think is pretty important for us to to, to keep unified with the rest of the project. So, um, you know, I can wait. Can I make one more call to the TSC to try to spend put some uh, time this week? I see that Greg Haskins has touched it. I see that uh, Nicholas uh, has touched it, and Mark. So we've had, and Jeremy, of course. So we've had four other people, and Jeremy gave some substantive comments on it. Um, but I'd be, I'd be really happy if we could have some more TFC involvement on, get, you know, touching it before, before we decide to make the point. So uh, that's, that's kind of my take. Um, and then uh, uh, on the community. Well, well for, let me stop there before going on. Um, what are, what are the people on the TSC? Like? So I I played with it. I didn't create any pages, but I you know simulated that activity um, and uh, poked around and saw it was there. I, I have no issues with it. Um, you know, it supports Markdown. We've had the discussion about whether or not we, you know we can 
um, you know, we can transfer this stuff pretty much verbatim. Uh, I, I get the sense that that shouldn't be a problem, so I'm, I'm uh, okay. Is, but I, I agree, Jeremy, I think it's good to get others to, to play around. Uh, this is Jeremy. We can't transfer it verbatim. That was the substance of my investigation. You, 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 it, it, you could if you wrap it, it with uh, the tag, right? Jeremy, did you try wrapping it with the uh, with the markdown tag? Uh, no, I tried pasting it uh, directly in and then migrating the markdown from GitHub markdown to the markdown that it supports. Is there a okay. is there a way to completely escape out the markdown? I think I responded to your note. Um, Maybe it was just on Slack, uh, um, but uh, uh, let me go back and look at this. But there's a, a plugin for for the wiki we're using for DocuWiki that we're using that supports. It, it claims being able to paste in standard Markdown. I don't know how different GitHub standard Markdown is from others, but let's pretend for a second there's a standard. Um, uh, and and uh, and if you use a a tag, and I'm pretty sure it's it's simply you know. Markdown in brackets and then flash markdown at the end, then it will parse everything in there as uh, as clean markdown. Um, let me see if I can find anything else about this. Uh, um, that needs to be tested, but uh, uh, that's uh, that was the last status I had. Um, uh, I hadn't seen that. If you can uh, uh, point me to that, that would be great, and I can give it a try. Oh, I think what it was is I think I sent the link for this around in the chat window on the last TSC call. So, all right, I will I will respond to this more more directly um, uh, and uh, get it out. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and, I, and just I, to be I, clear, I, GitHub Markdown is not the same as some of the other Markdowns. Uh, yeah, there's, there's multiple. Fortunately, not not there, all the same. I, I don't know that there's a quote unquote standard that Brian said. I think. Um, so many to choose from. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay, well, um, let's give it at least one more week. Yeah, so everybody has a homework assignment. Create a page using, you yeah. know, or, or copy a page of yours and, um, you know, get, get a sense of the experience. And if we're good, then we're good. Um, and Jeremy, it would be great if, if you'd be willing to sort of rerun that experiment. I thought, and again, I... I, I recall that the, the the conversation that said that there's a plugin and that you can surround the GitHub Markdown with uh, a Markdown tag, and it should support uh, that hey, um, So just to wrap this up, so we can get onto the white paper work. Yeah. Um, at least one more week. I will send out um, what I can find, and uh, if people on the TSC could really just take you know the 20 minutes. To give that a try, um, you know, I think we'll be significantly further ahead. Thanks, Brian. And anybody, anybody with a Linux Foundation ID can go create draft pages right now, or it's only TSC. No, oh, any anybody with <coughs> anybody with a Linux Foundation ID. Okay, great. Well, I'll ask a couple other people to go take a look too. Okay, cool. Great. Thanks, Dan. So, um, what about? Uh, oh, and uh, so um, I believe Todd sent around information about Discord, um, yep. uh, and uh, that is also something that is uh, uh, something that, that I haven't yet pushed any further, and I don't know if anyone else here has, has poked around in it. Um, so uh, uh, let's let's leave that kind of to the side for a second. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's a typical forum. Um, Capability. I haven't, you know, explored the complete edges, but I put up a post, and Ryan and I have been going back and forth and replying to each other and so forth. Um, the question I had is, can you access it from the out? In other words, would it be the same as having public archives of the mailing list? So I would love to use it to replace most, if not all, of what we use the uh, of what we use Mailman for. And I yeah. believe it's designed to support participation by email, bi-directionally, so that you not only get 
new notifications when they are posted in the categories that you track, but that you also can re reply through your mail client uh, and reply in a very natural way and have that reply woven back into the thread. Um, right. That would be my number one criteria, frankly, because we don't need just yet another foreign tool. You know, we need something that improves substantially upon Mailman. Um, uh, and so, uh, and that and that could actually be an upgrade to Mailman because there's a Mailman three out there, which apparently, like all upgrades, fixes every problem known to man. Um, but uh, uh, this is this is something that other communities use very heavily in the open source world. Um, this is something that. I think it just visually has a much better pop. Um, uh, and the other key criteria for me is um, search engine familiarity. You know, do right. messages in here get indexed and, and turn up in responses? Um, that's something we'll have to figure out. All right, so let's let's have everybody sort of get into discourse and you know at least just get familiar with it, and let's uh, let's see if we can't make a decision next week. Um, okay. So the, the, the other thing that um, I wanted to mention before we get into the white paper review with Dave, and that is that um, we proposed to cancel the 29th, I believe it was, um, because many of us will be at Cybos and or traveling up to um, Amsterdam, and so that will be an awkward time to try and um, and, and have a TSC meeting. So we're going to cancel the 29th. And then um, <clears throat> I've also proposed that we, uh, because for the most part, except for this call, and I think it was last week when we ran over because we had really good discussion around um, uh, some, of the, some of the proposals, um, that we cut the time of the meeting back to an hour. Because I think, you know, if we look at the, the, the past history, we've been ending roughly at an hour um, on a consistent basis pretty much since the spring. And, um, uh, you know, with, with a few exceptions, obviously, but um, I think we should probably just cut it back to an hour, and then that way everybody has another half an hour back in their lives. And, you know, if we find that that isn't working out and we need to go back to 90 minutes, we can think about that or we can maybe do it you know, periodically we have a longer meeting to, to get into more substantive discussions. But um, uh, that's what I'm proposing, and I'll entertain any um, any comments or thoughts on on you know dialing it back to an hour. I sus I suspect that I'm not going to get a whole lot of pushback. And I'm hearing no pushback. So either everybody's on mute, <laughs> which, or there's no com no 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 concerns with that. So so that's what we're going to do. So starting next week, we'll go to an hour, um, and Todd will adjust the uh, or somebody will adjust the calendar, and um, and we'll press forward. So and it'll be the, the start at the same time. So we'll start at 10, go to 11, uh, Eastern, uh, seven, and and the reason for that is uh, I think Richard, you routinely seem to be. Uh, have a commitment at the top of the hour, and so we're going to try and, and help you with that, and um, <laughs> Thank you. keep you for the full time. And uh, <clears throat> plus, we do have you know people in far flung time zones, and I think the earlier time is better. I understand that for the Californians, uh, it's a little bit awkward, but uh, I'm afraid that's you know the only other thing would be to sort of have rotating time, but that gets complicated and confusing people um, yeah. off of those meetings. Okay. We've done that, and okay. I've done that, and it, it ends up being more trouble than it's worth. Uh, us Californians have it easy in so many other ways. I think we're, we're happy to uh, take one for the team. Yeah, so you can have your Cheerios while we, <laughs> while we go. So, um, okay. So let's uh, get right into it. So I'm going to, Dave, I'm, I'm going to turn over the presentation to you, if that's okay. Yep, and that sounds good. Probably pull up uh, a copy of the white paper, and then we'll just go through section by section. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you give me the ability, I could share my screen. and you could, uh, uh, Way at the bottom. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 
Okay, let's see. Show my screen. Let's see. Can I uh, I think I want to change my monitor if I can. Okay. Uh, no, I don't want to be sharing my monitor or my calendar. <laughs> Hold on here. Uh, screen, share my my monitor. Okay, I think we got it there. Can everyone see the Hyperledger homepage? Is that a can people see my can people see the Hyperledger homepage on my browser right now? No, oh, David, we see the CIB Emerging Technology. We see <laughs> Symphony. We see Symphony Windows. Yeah, I see. Emerging <laughs> Technology. <laughs> What? It, your symphony chat window. <laughs> yeah, yeah multiple chat window. screen. Probably. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, one second. Let me try this one more time. I have three monitors. I thought that maybe this is it. How about now? Yes. We see okay, it. there we go. <laughs> All right. Very good. All right, yes, so um, thanks everyone. So we'll be uh, walking through our white paper this morning. Of course, yesterday we, we had a, um, a, a walk through as well, and we had very good um, attendance and good feedback, and we really appreciate that. You know, getting feedback from the community is really important, and uh, we really appreciate everyone's involvement. Um, since yesterday also, I, I see that we've got some more feedback from Jeremy. I see that you had submitted some feedback through the channel, and, and Chris, I had a, a chance to look through some of your feedback that you had submitted, and that really looks um, some some very valuable um, and good suggestions there, not only in just making it a little bit more readable, but some important content-related comments. Uh, of course, we haven't been able to incorporate that in there, but, uh, you know, just Quickly, I wanted to just make sure everyone understood, you know, uh, how where the paper is and uh, and how to, you know, the, the feedback channel we have. Um, of course, you know, this is perfectly wonderful as well. In fact, it's much richer. But um, you know, one of the things, you know, if we go through the through our Hyperledger site now, which is really nice, by the way. I I, I just yesterday I didn't realize it was updated so nicely, but um, of course, we're, if we still are pointing to the, the older wiki, we're going to have to change this. But when we come to, into the wiki, we have um, the white paper working group section here. And um, this is where we've been uh, cre creating the link for the, uh, the most recent version. So right now, you know, what we're going to be reviewing is what we're calling draft 2.0. Um, our goal is to remove the draft labeling uh, in time for Cybos. And, uh, and so this review is important um, so that uh, everyone gets a chance to look at it and give us um, their feedback so we can incorporate that into our, our Cybos version. Uh, there's a link here that will uh, allow you to, to fill out the form. And then what we typically do on our, on our weekly meetings is we'll, we'll go through that feedback and, um, and we'll discuss it. And uh, we try to get back to everyone, um, though yesterday one of the one of the, our community members um, pointed out that uh, I we failed to re respond, but that was really an oversight. We really mean to uh, to do that. Just a reminder: here's uh, our members. Um, everyone's been very active and appreciate all that. And um, yeah, so so the so the the goal here is we're we're going to try to get through all ten sections of of the uh, paper in under an hour, and we were able to do that yesterday. Um, so I'm just going to keep this up here. Uh, basically, you know, Morali, Krishna, is, he's going to kick things off with a review of the abstract and background, and then Hart Montgomery um, is going to cover a couple of sections in the paper, why a new blockchain, our vision, Stefan, following by Stefan, Back to uh, and then Ram is going to who who leads our architecture working group. He'll be covering the architecture section. Back to Ram, 
and then uh, and then I'll wrap things up. So we've allotted um, you know this amount of time for each section. If it looks like we're running over, I might jump in. Um, but my job mostly is just to kind of keep track of notes and and keep the thing flying. So uh, if anyone if anyone has any questions about the format, please raise them now. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and jump right in. No. Okay. Um, so um, one, yes. just just one one thing, and I you know since we do have Greg on, and I don't think everybody knows who Greg is. Greg is our um, marketing director for um, the Hyperledger project, and um, the the website is really cool. And I do want to give kudos to Greg and his team um, for um, uh, for the the uh, <clears throat> the complete overhaul because it's gone from. You know, looks like somebody just threw it up <laughs> in an afternoon. To something that's really, I think, quite impressive, and and so I I just want to give kudos to Greg and the team. Oh, well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I did it. a great job. Uh, th <laughs> thank you, thank you all very much. I mean, it was very much a team effort. So um, I'm excited to be part of this group, and uh, yeah, I mean, the website will be a good resource for all of us, and a nice website will be an even better resource. So my pleasure. All right, great. All right, so um, we'll just pass it over to Morelli then. Oh, so just one other quick, you know, rather than just reading through the whole thing, the approach we, we're sort of taking with this is much like a code review. You know, we ask ourselves, you know, what is what is the intent of the particular, uh, uh, you know, the, what is the intended function of the section, and is it easily understood? And uh, and so, you know, basically the format will will. We'll explain the intended function of each section, maybe highlight a few key passages, and then open it up for discussion. So um, that's sort of the, the layout. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll pass it over to Morelli. Sure. Thank you, David. So like David said, um, this is the white paper is a, is a working of all the, all the work group members. And we'll go through, um, you know, for each of the sections, giving a brief synopsis. So the first section is the abstract, and we all know that Hyperledger is a consortium of many companies and industries, and the abstract sort of, um, you know, you know, sort of uh, highlights or sticks to that core tenets that um, this platform that we are developing is for multiple industries across the board, um, and. So the white paper collects all the different industry use cases, and then based on the industry use cases, we derive principles or any functional or non-functional requirements are based of those industry use cases. Uh, industry use cases. So that's what the abstract talks about. It being a cross-industry and uh, industry use case driven, uh, which drives the principles and the and the requirements, functional and non-functional. So any uh, comments, questions, feedback on the abstract? Yeah, when, when Brian first joined, I, I like the verbiage that, that he brought in with uh, hyper a family of, um, I'll butcher it, but like a family of blockchain technologies. And that might be a little bit more specific than uh, referring to it as a platform here. Okay, family of blockchain technologies. Okay. Yeah, um, and you know, one thing I've I've wrestled with uh, is design. Sorry, as uh, as you know, I've read this, and and you know, obviously we're evolving as a project um, from fabric uh, strictly as you know the the, the sole project to to one where you know there's a series of projects um, that potentially represent different approaches to you know your core distributed ledger and and smart contract platform um, and so you know one thing we may want to wrestle with is to what degree is is this a fabric white paper um, or is this a you know a call to arms uh, for for all the projects hosted at hyperledger um, we certainly will be encouraging the projects at hyperledger to be working with each other to be building on top of each other to be merging their efforts where appropriate, um, you know, either either merging or usefully differentiating has been the uh, has been the phrase that I've been using. You know, in the same way that Darwin finches on a Galapagos usefully differentiated um, over time. So I, I you know, I'd be um, you know, 
I, that, that, that's a path to take. I think most of this paper is written with the idea that it's a fabric white paper, and I think that's fine. I think we should just oh, be able to about it. Yeah, you know, we, so we, real, we, we really did uh, go to uh, great lengths to try to remove um, any direct references. Hi. Hi. Yeah, no, I was just uh, responding there that we, we did go to great lengths to remove uh, direct references to fabric. It is not meant to be fabric. It is meant to be much more generic. <laughs> Uh, this is Jeremy. I, I I don't think this reads like fabric. I think this reads like something that says one size doesn't fit blockchain, and therefore we need a uh, need pluggable components. So I think it works pretty well. So somebody, somebody uh, this, is, this is Chris. Um, somebody is on the phone and not on you. So here's. I don't know if I can do this. I think I can maybe mute everybody and then, uh, or maybe Greg, you can do that. Um, I, was, I, was I muted everybody, but it muted you as well. Chris, if you well, I can unmute myself. I think everybody can selectively unmute themselves, but somebody is on the phone. Yeah. In the background. Let me um, try that again. Just yeah. mute everybody, and then. Yeah. And uh, Morali, you can unmute yourself. And yeah. No, I think if I mute everybody, you have to, I have to unmute somebody. So who am I unmuting, Chris? Oh. Um, no, I, I, this is, oh. I think we're okay here. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we're okay, okay now. Yeah. All right. We can okay. unmute ourselves, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I'll just, I'll take the first re response there, you know, that, um, we really got, went to great effort because we did get some earlier feedback that it appeared to be too too fabric-like, um, and so you know we we went to great measures to do that. But um, there's I think there's still a really good point here, and in fact, Chris um, Ferris, in your feedback, you also highlighted this the the fact that we're talking about hyperledger in sort of the singular uh, form. And um, and so you know this is something that we did discuss as a working group. Um, you know I think our original 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 idea was that we would all be converging onto a single code base. Um, and but of course we've certainly seen now and and there has been language coming out. And in fact, back to you know the Hyperledger uh, website. If you look at the latest blog from Brian, it really uh, goes into more detail about Hyperledger as an umbrella organization. And so I think you know um, I think we can in fact revise this abstract section to um, uh, along the lines that you suggested, Chris, uh, where we can uh, speak in terms of more of of uh, not not so much as in the singular, but uh, but uh, a comp you know allowing for a bunch of uh, you know things that will allow for sharing. Um, so, so that that's good feedback. It's something that we've been talking about. Um, but I think if you go through the the if you look in the details of the paper as a whole, we we've we've totally uh, went to great lengths to ensure that we weren't specifically talking about just one of the uh, stacks under uh, incubation. And Hart, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I think you you had something to say on this as well. So uh, I wasn't going to say anything yet. Um. Oh, OK. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, all right, sorry, Morali. I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, sure. No problem, uh, David. So at a, uh, on the background, so let me move over to the background. Um, I think you know, I, I think we all are aware of the background as to why we are interested in the blockchain technology because of the new, opportun new opportunities it uh, 
makes available and also the potential to reduce operational costs without which um, you know the the current systems have an individual system of record where every company has an individual system of record and there's there is the, the cost is because because of the uh, because of the reconciliation that happens after the fact right so it's not just the new opportunities that the blockchain technology presents but it also the opportunity of reducing costs and in this space, we all know about uh, two very popular uh, blockchain technologies, which are the Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are primarily permissionless. And uh, I think where these, you know, the hyperledger, not a singular, but you know, where what we are trying here as a consortium is to start with: can we do anything on the permission space? Um, where we can have a permission network with the with 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 many different participants coming on board, and one of the other um, key technology tenants that we can have is a plug and play in terms of the consensus or any other uh, components. We should be able to be able to plug and play, which will allow which will allow the adaptability of the plat of the of the the of the hyperledger itself. Right. So whether we have one or multiple uh, code bases, the idea is each of those. Let's design it in a plug-and-play fashion that uh, down the road we could either interchange or um, or have the networks talking to each other. So that's what is presented in the the background section. And I'll open it, open it up for any uh, questions or comments on this section also. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, again, if if, uh, if if people do have some extra comments, they and they you know a little shy of speaking up, we we have our feedback channel. Um, so I just encourage people to kind of read through this. And if uh, again, I know Chris has made some some very nice uh, suggestions around readability, um, but for the most part, I think uh, we're looks like we're in pretty comfortable with the the background. So with that, I'll we'll we'll pass the the ton over to Hart for a description on the next two sections. Um, hi. Um, so the next section is why a new blockchain, uh, and uh, Murali did a, a great job of sort of introducing this uh, in the previous uh, section discussion. Um, but basically, uh, this section sort of briefly emphasizes uh, why we need Hyperledger, why we're working on Hyperledger, and why you might want to use Hyperledger. Uh, so kind of the point of the section is right now that the main blockchain technologies, as Murali emphasized, are sort of uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin, and they really don't solve a lot of industrial applications that we're interested in solving. Um, so hence why we need a new blockchain. I expect this section to change a lot uh, sort of as time goes on and to, be, uh, to really become sort of why Hyperledger. Uh, as more blockchains come out, as technology changes, sort of the reasons why you might want to use Hyperledger uh, might change. So I expect this section to evolve a lot uh, as time goes on. Um, are there any questions about this? Hi, it's Richard here. Um, just check you can hear me. I can hear you, Richard. Oh, brilliant. Okay, good. Um, so, um, so I get one comment on this, and then one on how it impinges on the rest of the doc. So, um, so an argument for why new new blockchain like technologies need to be built, I think, is important, and, and the case is well made here. Um, but um, I think actually Vipin made a similar comment on, in the in the forum. We need to, um, uh, I guess, we probably need to use plural rather than singular. So, um, to make sure the reader. You know, fully understands that at least the, the introductory sections of this paper are, are setting the scene for a family, an umbrella, a project. We, we should pluralize it. Um, and while, 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 I have the, while I have the mic, although it, it, it relates to stuff that's coming later, um, as, I, as I review this again, having sent comments a few times in the past, what, what I'm wondering is where we may end up is whether we should 
clearly delineate two parts of the white paper. So there's an introduction, these sections, and, and maybe the conclusions that make the case for a family of 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 um, of, of sort of like you know, business style blockchains and uh, and so forth. And then and then later on, where there is specific content that the team have done a good job of of, of genericizing, but it's still quite clearly fabric related in terms of some of the diagrams. Perhaps we just we just embrace that and we say and and here is you know and, and okay so make the case for a make the case for the project for the for the need of a, for an umbrella and family approach and as the most further most most advanced or as an exemplar of it. Now let's. Give an example of one of these platforms. So, so just almost just say, almost say acknowledge and um, and 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 own that that otherwise um, sort of tension causing dilemma. Yeah. So I think um, I'll address a bunch of this in the next section. Uh, so we actually are working. Uh, we're not uh, is working a lot on the diagrams. Um, and I think our goal is to to have everything, uh, you know, at some point be modularized enough where we can have diagrams that sort of apply to uh, the entire family uh, rather than just one uh, one instance. I guess does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, it's. If we can achieve that, that that will be awesome. I mean, I must admit, I was probably just taking the the, the sort of the lazy way out by saying, um, given 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 where we are and the the, the 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 compelling need to have something ready for Cyboss, I was kind of offering a, as I say, an easy way out, which is to just 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 clearly mark you know, which pieces are talking about the overall family vision and which pieces are specific to a technology. But but if we can get the diagrams to that state, then then great. Um, all right. Uh, I guess are there any other questions on this short section before we move on? I guess not. Uh, obviously, if you have feedback, please feel free to submit it online or email to the working group. Uh, or anything else. Um, so I guess if we can go to the vision section. <clears throat> so this is probably the most controversial section. So uh, get out your pitchforks, I guess. Um, so this is about you know maybe a page or two where we summarize sort of where we want Hyperledger to go. Uh, and uh, I think this is more consistent with sort of the family approach. So uh, after a lot of discussion, we kind of thought that uh, we wanted Hyperledger to consist of sort of lots of modular pieces that can talk to each other. So this kind of fits the family theme. Um, and, you know, we, we want to have these, these pieces be well defined and we want sort of really plug and play uh, aspects. So, you know, if someone has a really good consensus algorithm, but, you know, someone else has a really good database, then, you know, we, we want people to be able to use these things. And kind of our point is that uh, lots of people have lots of different applications and use cases, uh, and each use case and application is going to kind of need different features. Uh, you know, sort of no two use cases are exactly alike. Uh, so people want to mix and match parts, and they'll want to maybe even write some of their own parts, uh, and we want all of these to, to fit together nicely. Uh, so. This is kind of our our long term view is of sort of modular plug and play uh, pieces that that can all talk to each other uh, and work with each other, and I think this is more or less compatible with this uh, this sort of family idea. Um, so uh, I guess uh, does anyone have any questions or comments or? So, Hart, you know, one, I'll just point out, you know, one one important point that Chris made in his feedback um, was about using the term uh, standards, and and we have to be kind of careful with that. And I'm I'm looking for the line here. I think it was in the first paragraph somewhere. Um, 
but that basically, you know, this isn't uh, this isn't a standards uh, initiative. It's really an open source initiative, and and you know we want to be might want to we just need to be careful when we use that that word standards and make it clear that uh, that that um, you know uh, that there is a difference between the two, <laughs> and and uh, and that we, it's clear that what we're talking about here is a, an open source project or initiative. Definitely. I mean, I yeah. saw that comment. I think it's a good comment from Chris. Um, yeah. I think we need, I mean, we're obviously going to have to have de facto standards if, if these things are going to, to talk to each other. Um, but we, we should emphasize uh, that we're not a standards body. and we're, The goal is not to do standards. The goal is to have buildable technology. Uh, yeah. So... So I, I, I agree that that's a good point that we should emphasize. Yeah, great. Right, because, uh, you know, the last thing we need or want is to have, you know, a bunch of people that know nothing about what they're talking, writing some specification that tells us what the standard is. Um, so I, I don't want to I don't want to see us encouraging that uh, in any way. It's going to happen. There's a couple of working groups going on at ISO. And they'll publish something, and hopefully it'll be irrelevant. But that's, that's yeah. One of um, <laughs> this is Brian. One of the points I made in my rambling first blog post, um, I probably should have been three or four different posts, um, was about this distinction between the implementers, the standards bodies, and the global governance organizations. And um, I think it's very useful for us to be able to deflect some of the political pressure uh, out there for people to converge on, you know, one one wire protocol to rule them all um, over to these other groups and instead to say, we're going to be building what we know we need to build for our needs. And if some of these de facto standards become candidates for promoting upwards to places like W3C or ISO or insert, insert industry standards group here, then great. Um, but I, you know, I want to make a firm distinction between what, what we're doing, which is building, running software that might consume standards all day long and, and throw some off, uh, versus a standards body, which is just different processes, different characteristics, that sort of thing. Yeah, I agree. Okay. We can, uh, we can go through and, and uh, rewrite that so it's a little less uh, de-emphasizing de sort of the use of the word standards and sort of more emphasizing the fact that we want uh, the components to be able to talk to each other uh, and, and be plug and play, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it does, and I, you know, I think it's important to talk about interoperability and portability. So, you know, you can you can highlight, I think the the, the theme that you're on there that you know if we're going to have these various, um, uh, you know, this sort of family of components that can be you know assembled into useful solutions that the set of interfaces need to be interoperable uh, and the, you know, and if you're going to write smart contracts, they need to be portable from one platform to the next. And uh, I think that's it's perfectly fine to talk about those two characteristics. Um, and, and I'd even, okay, so, so interoperability is important within a chain, right? Everybody who has set up and is participating, you know, the 20 banks on a banking network all need to be talking the same protocol. To me, though, that chain can have a very different set of characteristics in terms of consensus mechanism, in terms of block size, in terms of, you know, uh, you know anything that you might parameterize as an initial configuration, to, you know, when you mine your genesis block, <laughs> so to speak, right, and kick the chain off. Um, and the more that we can make those runtime configuration variables rather than, you know, completely separate sets of software, um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think we do everyone a service, and so the modularity thing is somewhat, to some degree, also a, a customizability thing. You know, we're not trying to say there's only one consensus mechanism to rule the world, um, which even distinguishes this from the side chain point of view, because side chains are still fundamentally about tying into one big chain at some point in the, in the life cycle and using pretty much the same consensus mechanism to do it. So, um, so I like the modularity. I think interop is is useful, but I don't want to overplay interop because because this is not like TCP/IP. This is more like um, a distributed database, right? 
Well, so I was going, I was using the term interop in terms of, you know, uh, as we were discussing, for instance, the, the blockchain explorer, Mick and I were, you know, we, we obviously, you know, Sawtooth has a set of in interfaces and APIs, and then Fabric has another set, and we were going to do this sort of pluggable approach, but ideally we align on some set of interfaces. I wouldn't call it a standard, but it's an interoperability interface or you know API layer that we would maybe strive to get to the point so that we don't have to build in these sort of uh, yeah intermediary you know abstraction layers that that try and do right, right. and that convolute the things that, that um, and that's the expression that is like a first principle of good engineering rather right. than a, man, a mandate or a <clears throat> right yeah so I yeah I was I definitely agree I, I'm, I'm not talking about interop between blockchains, that's a different, wholly different thing. Okay, well, I, I think that's that's good. I think we got the the point there. Um, we'll just make sure it's clear. You know, we're talking about um, that. Make it clear that we're not a standards body, and we're not actually, um, you know, taking that task on, but you know, achieving the you know, the other aspects. So um, why don't we go ahead and and. Hi. Uh, Dave, it's uh, Jared yes. um, from Dean Watt. Uh, yeah, Jared. I, was, yeah, sorry. Um, I just want to, I guess, make a suggestion that I know we don't want to necessarily do a standards body, and we don't want to dictate standards, but I do think um, emphasizing engineering principles is perfectly reasonable. One would be kind of compatibility of languages. Um, it would be helpful if, for the most part, we try and find a minimal number of, uh, you know, kind of smart contract languages to maintain some compatibility as you do kind of find that kind of thing. So, I don't know. I, I, this is my first session with the committee, so I'll totally uh, uh, be retreading all down here, but I, I, that's just one thought that came to mind. So I think I think the that you're trying to make is on um, you know trying to get to fewer programming languages than more. I think I tend to agree with that. Although yeah, you know, we've got Sawtooth that's um, primarily or maybe exclusively Python, and uh, then we've got the the Fabric which is primarily Go, but then we have um, a set of SDKs that are evolving that will obviously be language specific, so that the application clients oh, exactly. can be written in whatever floats your boat, which is, I think, as it should be. Is that? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's, I'm just saying in terms of, like, smart contracting languages. So, yeah, I mean, the underlying language of what each thing is written in is, is less important to me than what the application Oh, more, yeah, so the smart contracts, yeah, I think that's obviously something that will, um, I mean, right now we have Go and Java in the Fabric, and then obviously in the, the transaction families are, are Python for Sawtooth. But um, I, I, I kind of hope that we can get to a point where we are, are less concerned about the language that you have to write the, um, the contract in, and it becomes a little bit more obvious that there's, you know, whether it's something like Solidity or if there's a DSL that we can all come up with that, you know, there's various ways that you can develop it, I think, will, um, and then we generate a, the code that actually executes, and that's not really relevant to the developer. That, that may be where we get. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Yeah. It's almost like the, 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 the languages, whether they're DSLs or more generic, um, it's probably, yeah, it's almost like something we want to encourage a, a plurality there over time. There's just so much research going on in that space. Yeah. I, I just had one other um, comment on this section. I just read through it again. Um, I think it only requires like one sentence or something um, just to clarify it in the in the eyes of an in a, inattentive reader. Um, a quick read of it can give the impression that we envisage a a single logical architecture and that the plurality comes from um, competing. Um, competing implementations of different components um, and I think I think that is actually a worthy goal but I don't think that's what we'll achieve um, in, in the short or even the medium term I think we will see um, 
very different architectures, but which can still share some common components because you know, um, you know, a consensus library could be used by multiple architectures, even though the architectures themselves are very different. I mean, Sawtooth and mm -hmm. for examples of that, and, and obviously um, others are as well. So, just just on a quick read, it makes it the, the reader can can fall into the trap of thinking we're proposing a a, a common a common conceptual architecture or logical architecture when I don't think we are. So I think it just needs a word, a sentence to clarify that. Yeah, I think that that's good feedback. Thanks, Richard. Okay, so just just to kind of keep things moving along, um, and and any other thoughts, please, um, you know, submit them offline. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and uh, pass the over to Stefan, who will talk us through industry use cases and featured requirements. Yeah, hi, good morning. i just give you a brief overview of our section industry use cases. The idea is basically to come up with some sample use cases that where Hyperledger might play, play a role across industries. And here up front, I would like to ask you for feedback if we have not overemphasized financial industries. Please have a look and give us feedback there. The use cases we mentioned is financial asset depository, core production, supply chain, master data management, and Internet of Things. I go into a bit of detail of each now. Financial asset depository, basically the workhorse of financial industry, how to tokenize assets, how to make them interact, and how to come up with uh, post-trade or even trade applications. Then core productions is what to do with the assets on the blockchain, how to pay dividends, how to pay um, coupons for bonds and so on. Supply chain covering basically the producing industries um, supply chains, i.e. Um, value chains from raw products 